Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing good today. Time for today's YouTube video on really one of my favorite ways to catch bass and that's with the jig. And what I'm gonna show you today is a modification that um, I've sort of came up with. Uh, a, a lot of people do the same thing, but I've sort of given my own tweak on this modification over fish and jigs for like the last 40 or 50 years. And I think it's gonna add up to a lot more hook versus land ratio for you because um, a lot of people think a jig is like a real high percentage lure as far as getting the fish in the boat. But based upon the trailers you're using and the size of jig and the cover that you're fishing, a jig, you can actually lose a lot of fish on it. And I've probably lost as many bass on a jig um, if I don't modify this one particular element that I'm talking about uh, as much as any other lure category out there. So we're gonna show you my big jig modification secret. So um, before we get into that, hey, just wanted to remind you guys a couple things. As you know, um, at Fish the Moment, if you follow us, we've started a new YouTube channel um, called Fish the Moment Live. Still got the old Fish the Moment uh, YouTube channel where a lot of the instructional videos are gonna stay on. But Fish the Moment Live is gonna be where we show our live podcasts and um, we're gonna have tips and segments of these podcasts every day on Fish the Moment Live. So it's a really informational, educational deal. So if you haven't had a chance, go subscribe to Fish the Moment Live. And also on my channel, I've started selling merchandise. So I'm selling hoodies and t-shirts now. So you can see it on my channel. You can see it says, I think it says Intuitive Angling by Teespring. And I've included a link here um, that if you're interested in ordering any t-shirts from my site, you can do that. It's a great way to support the channel if you want to uh, help out a little bit here. So anyway, that's that. So let's get into today's tip. Um, the tip I want to show you guys has to do with weed guard modification because basically all jigs are the same. You got, it's just a variation of the different type of hook in them, different type of, of head design. Some got rattles, some don't, and the weed guard. So as far as the components on a jig goes, every jig's pretty similar except, you know, just the design of the components on it. So what I want to show you guys here is a stock weed guard. Now, when you buy a jig out of a package, this is the way the weed guard is on most of them. Um, they're really oversized or too big. Um, they really uh, are not designed for, to be fished like this. I don't think a lot of average anglers know that because I see a lot of people actually fishing jigs just like this out of the package. But what you wanna do, the first uh, tip you want I wanna give you, you've gotta modify the length of this jig a little bit. <clears throat> gotta get it more natural looking. Basically what they've done from the factory is they've taken a stock weed guard, stuck it in the jig head, and left it. First thing you want to do is you want to trim this weed guard to where it's like an eighth of an inch back from the hook point here. So what I do is I hold my jig like this and I want to go parallel. I want to go parallel to the, the hook. So I come up like this and I'll cut across parallel. So that's the way we have it right there. That's how it's looking. You know, you can see that quite a bit different there. Okay, now this is the way I fish the jig. I, I leave it like this, fully fibers, all the fibers in it, if I'm fishing extremely heavy cover, like flipping bushes, uh, flipping heavy laydowns and heavy current, places where it's snaggy, then I'm gonna get hung up a lot. Even though this is, is fairly stiff here, I've gotta keep it like this so I'm not hung up all the time and reducing my efficiency. What I want to do from this point, the modification from this point, is you always want to maximize your efficiency versus the ability to land the fish. So in a heavy cover situation, it stays like this. Now let's say, for example, I'm going to a little bit less uh, snaggy stuff. Say I'm, say I'm pitching into to, you know, thick laydowns that don't have current, or I'm flipping like way up underneath docks, or um, you know, I'm flipping more isolated wood, wood that type of stuff. At this point, I go in and I put my scissors and I want to take off, I'm going to try to take off like maybe eight or 10 strands. Go in there all the way to the hook, the hook and I knock it off about that much. So what I've done is I've reduced the amount of fibers in the jig. And by doing that, it makes this softer and it's going to make that hook set a lot more easy. When you set the hook, you, you don't have near as much fiber to penetrate to get in that bass's mouth. This is a deal, you know, for medium type cover, you know, medium heavy covers. I'll trim about eight or 10 strips off of it. Now say, for example, say we're fishing like, 
uh, cleaner areas, say like pitching riprap banks, or maybe you're fishing isolated stumps where the bank's uh, fairly clear around the stump, or maybe uh, isolated dock pilings that don't that you're not getting way up underneath, places that aren't real snaggy, even though you're around cover. At that point, I go in and I take off about another eight or 10 off of it. So as you can see there, see how much thinner that is? So here is the original jig right here next to the modified one, as you can see. Notice the difference in the weed guard. Notice the difference on how this jig looks. Notice how much more diminutive and natural this looks versus the way it out, is out of, out of the package. It makes a big difference on, you know, visual strike attractors. And sometimes if I'm fishing like super clean areas, say I'm pitching to bare banks or say I'm pitching to real isolated stuff that's clean around it, I may take the weed guard completely off because there's nothing to say that you have to have a weed guard on a jig. It just makes you more efficient. So if you can get by without a weed guard, by all means, take the weed guard off it. So, you know, these two things are going to are definitely add up to a lot more. So um, just give this a tip. Basically what I'm trying, or give this a try. Basically what I'm trying to do is you need to modify the density of your weed guard based upon the cover that you're fishing. And this is just a matter of experience because once you get to be good with a jig, um, you don't get hung up as much because once you learn the feel of a jig, what it feels like crawling over an object, sometimes you can feel a jig coming up over a piece of wood or rock and you can sort of finesse it and pull it through there without it getting hung up. So the more uh, in tune you get with the, what your bait is doing on the bottom, the less you're gonna get hung up. But anyway, um, it's a balance here. It's a balance of efficiency of not getting hung up versus landing those fish with less uh, material in the way to impede the hook set. So anyway, that's just a simple tip that's really going to help you guys out a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I promise you it is. You know, reducing the amount of weed guard and trimming it where it's streamlined will get you more strikes because it, it offers less of a visual negative. And it simply will just land you more fish because it's a more efficient way of hooking them. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, we got lots more to do on jigs. I mean, jigs is, jigs is going to take up dozens of videos. There's so many variables on it. This is only one small variable. So we'll keep working on that as, as the year goes by. But hey, again, guys, you know, I really appreciate everybody watching the channel. If you hadn't had a chance, you know, please subscribe, hit that like button. You know, if you like this video right now, I've got about 60% of the people that watch this, my videos don't subscribe to the channel. So man, if you like these videos and you're watching them, just hit that subscribe button because it really helps, you know, being able to take the time to put these videos out. So I hope you guys are doing good and we'll be back tomorrow with another tip. See ya.